It's that time of year again where seemingly every gaming laptop's on sale. So I bought one that seemed almost too good to be true for the price just to see what kind of deals are out there at the moment. But before we check it out, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor. After a long, hard day at work, I like to soothe my brow with a steaming hot cup of Linode. There's just nothing quite like a good, reliable Linux-based cloud computing service for all your web hosting and computational needs. Top it off with industry-leading customer support and you've got a winner. Try Linode today and new accounts get a $100 60-day credit. Linode. Now this laptop cost me the equivalent of about 715 US dollars. And for that, you get an Intel 12700H, which is already ridiculous for the price, a 512 gig SSD, eight gigs of RAM, which ugh, I guess we can't really complain about it at this price. Hopefully it's not that difficult to fix. We'll figure that out later in the video. Uh, we also get an RTX 3050 Ti, which doesn't mean a whole lot, but again, we'll investigate later on. And we also get a 1080p high refresh rate IPS display. So unless this laptop's like a violent despot or something, it's probably a great deal. So let's open it up and find out. Ooh, we've got some blue gamer accents. Nice. That is a perfectly reasonable 170 watt power brick. It's quite wide, but it's relatively thin and light. And then on this end, we have the Mickey Mouse ears. Now, the first impressions are of turtle death. This is a real plastic boy, which at this price point isn't a big deal, and it's very robust feeling plastic. Oh, yeah, that is a real sturdy feeling laptop. And one of the things that I quite like about the plain plastic build of it is that it doesn't make me feel like a gross cheesy ogre every time I touch it in the way that an aluminium device like a MacBook makes me feel. But that could just be my low self-esteem talking. There's also a whole bunch of ventilation on this laptop which really gets my juices flowing. Now when it comes to the I.O., you've got square USB ports on either side of the laptop, and then there are some more goodies on the back. Ooh, very effectively passes the one hand open test. It's got one of those webcam privacy shield things that Lenovo puts on a lot of their devices. Uh, you've got reasonably thin bezels around the display, but this kind of chunk down here doesn't look that great. I'd say that that's like a mid to low tier laptop keyboard. It's a bit rattly, very unsatisfying keystrokes, but it's quite nicely laying out. We've even got a numpad for all of you Excel enthusiasts out there. And we've got full sized arrow keys, very nice. Trackpad is <laughs> quite plasticky, but it's a nice size and the click is okay on it. Now the hinge, has a nice weighting to it and you can see it actually goes really low but it is quite floppy look at that although yeah it's fine it's not too bad in terms of practical use but when you do open it up and move it around yeah it is a bit floppy a final thing that i do notice is that the speakers are downward facing which i absolutely hate when laptops do but anyway, with that, let's see how easy it is to open up this laptop and upgrade that abominable RAM configuration. Now, having a look at the base of this laptop, it's not very promising. I mean, uh, is a glory hole really that much to ask for on the base of a laptop? Just a panel to remove so you can easily access the insides. Hopefully, it doesn't feel as brutal to open as that Asus laptop I looked at a while ago. Let's, let's see. You can see there's a very thin gap that you need to get a tool in, and that's pretty brittle feeling plastic. Oh, this back bit's slowly starting to come off as well. So do I need to... Oh, 
So there are two screw screws on the back here as well that I think you need to undo. Devices. Oh, that is an unpleasant sound. Oh, that's a bit sneaky. We've got another two screws hiding under here, keeping this plate in. If there's soldered RAM under here, I'm gonna be so pissed. Oh, what? It's even attached to the hinge back here. So there's an additional couple screws. Wow, this laptop really makes you work for the teardown, but it hasn't felt quite as destructive as the Asus laptop I looked at a while ago. So I guess that's good, because uh, now that it's actually loose, we can just kind of lift it off, and then there is the inside of our 700-ish dollar laptop. That little tin plate better not be hiding RAM solder crimes. Now, once you've got the top off, uh, it's quite interesting in here. We've got what looks like four heat pipes, and there's quite a lot of cooling surface area. Actually, the first thing we need to do is disable the battery. There is actually a little bit of tape that keeps the RAM cover down. I don't know, that feels like one of those if tampered with warranty will be void kind of things we've got going on here. And you can just undo it like that, I guess, and then... Oh, good. It's just a single stick of RAM, which is not really something you want in a gaming laptop, but at least you can upgrade it, which is very good. And at this price, you can't really complain about 8 gigs. I'm not sure how 12th gen Intel laptop CPUs respond to single channel RAM. So we'll definitely upgrade that later in the video and see what effect that has. But this could be quite a knee to the groin of that CPU's performance. That is a Thick thermal pad. Damn. Wow, that is a fat boy thermal pad, which kind of just contacts the plastic back of the laptop. Uh, I think it kind of touches over here. I don't know how useful that's going to be, but you know, it is there. It's the thought that counts, I guess. Generally, for the price, that is a very acceptable laptop interior. I'm glad that there's some upgradability here. Uh, I do wish that it was easier to get into, but you can always make a laptop easier to get into. At least, it doesn't feel like you're breaking apart the universe when you open it. So yeah, I'm going to reassemble it, and then we're going to try do some gaming on it. That almost looks like one of those AI generated images to me. Now, when we go to all apps, we've got GeForce Experience on here, some Lenovo stuff, which I guess is expected. Oh, we've got McAfee Live Safe. That's a crowd favorite right there. N Nahimic. Oh, okay, so that's like for the, for the audio on the laptop. Yeah, I mean, it's not the worst I've seen, but it's, it's definitely not VD free, you know? Here is our Savage single stick of DDR4, which is actually running at its rated speed out of the box, which is nice. And considering that this is a DDR4 12th gen laptop, uh, it'll be nice and cheap to upgrade. Now with GTA 5 running at 1080p high settings, it's not running as well as I was expecting here. Although when we look closer, we can see that the GPU and the CPU aren't doing a whole lot, which means the culprit is most likely the RAM configuration as is always the case. But don't worry, we'll test that later on in the video. Uh, in terms of temperatures though, it's pretty good. And it's not that jet turbine-y, you know? It, it's, it's definitely audible, but it could be a whole lot worse. Oof, that yeah just look at that utilization uh but having said that it runs fine you know usually with this kind of kneecapped memory configuration you get really heavy and consistent stuttering whereas you can see here it's actually running reasonably you know this is a usable battlefield 5 gaming experience <laughs> Yeah, it's running fine at 1080p low settings. There is some quite wild frame rate fluctuation. Uh, it, it occasionally goes down below 30 frames per second, which is not ideal. Now, when it comes to GPU power draw, we're maxing out at 60 watts, which means this isn't the most powerful configuration of an RTX 3050 Ti at 80 watts, but it's not a particularly weak one either. Now, just a quick note on the temperatures. They are quite a bit higher playing Cyberpunk, but it's because I was running an hour worth of Cinebench runs while downloading the patch for Cyberpunk, 
and it took the laptop really long for it to hit this temperature level. Actually, on the note of the Cinebench scores, this 12700H is a real monster. Just look at those scores. And the laptop didn't get that noisy while running an extended heavy load. Anyway, with that, let's upgrade the RAM configuration and see what that does. Cool. Ah oh, yes, we're really stretching the legs on this 60 watt 3050 Ti now. Look at that. Good old almost 100% utilization. While it's clearly important to upgrade the RAM on this laptop, I was still impressed with how well this 12th gen laptop CPU handled the loser RAM configuration. So it turns out this laptop does not encapsulate the soul of Genghis Khan, and it's an example of just the kind of crazy laptop deals you can find if you look around at the moment. I think it's a good compromise. You get lots of gaming power that isn't particularly hot or noisy, and the compromise is turtle death, a mediocre keyboard, a battery that doesn't give you more than 30 minutes of gaming on the go, and a display which is very usable for gaming, but it doesn't measure particularly well, and it struggles with off-axis viewing. But this price, even if it set fire to my eyebrows every time I used it, I wouldn't really mind. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider watching another one, and until the next video, bye bye.